And to bring this home, I think uh, we'll just go to Poker Stove to see how this equity, this expected or estimated equity on flop pushes could be versus certain potential holdings by your opponents. Good. So let's take a scenario where we're ace-king and we only call an open raiser with ace-king offsuit in middle position, say. And... Okay, let's say the open raiser was the sevens here in this guy. Made a light three-bit squeeze with some diamonds, five of diamonds. <laughs> So to say. Okay, so we cold call in middle position to an open position raiser, and we get squeezed by the player on the button who is making a again light three bet squeeze, as defined in the previous video as not necessarily a smaller bet, but a wider range of hands. So he sees an under the gun player raise it up. In this case, the guy has seven, say. Also raising lighter, say, under the gun to widen his range, uh, in full ring at least. And we then cold call it instead of raising it with ace king. And this guy three uh, three bet squeezes light with a suited six five. Sevens call, and we only call thinking that either one of these guys could maybe be on strong pairs, even kings or aces. Yeah. It happens. So anyways, we just call to hit that flop. And the flop comes four diamonds, seven of diamonds, king of clubs. How does that look for the entire situation here? And as always, guys, of course, you're not playing this specific hand with this opponent, of course you're playing his entire range of hands for three bet squeezing and for open raising under the gun. It's a bit different, but just to give you a concrete example, this is what the equity breakdown would be on that flop. So we called completely sandwiched with ace king. We only called, which is very often a bad idea. Um, very often functional. Uh, let's say these guys actually were on proper hands, say um, this guy three bet squeezed with jacks, uh, with that queens and this guy had opened with uh, tens or jacks whatever that looks markedly different as an equity breakdown we'll just pop that in there real quick um, think, hey, this guy squeezed this with queens this guy opened with jacks on this board and all of a sudden we're just a market favorite so it's a playable call in certain situations I'm not gonna say right or wrong necessarily um, but in general, let's say this guy did, for educational purposes, 3-bet squeeze us light. Okay, we made that call here with the ace-king in middle position, get squeezed, call, and we call. And then we hit the flop actually we were looking for. We hit that king, we hit that top pair. And look at how this breaks down. <laughs> Just to go back to that small pots with small hands, big pots with big hands. I've got top pair, top kicker on a two-suited board, 4-7. <laughs> and I'm just licking my chops here. Very generally as a novice recreational player. And, and again, this will very often be a very, very strong hand versus your opponent's total ranges, but just to give you an example of what can be the situation, this guy's got a 65 suited, flopped an open-ended straight draw and the flush draw for 15 clean outs. He's got 45% equity with his draw alone. 45% equity with the 65 on that board because he's got 15 outs. <laughs> Guy who open raised to widen his range, say, under the gun, and then cold called, well, uh, called, say, the three bet flat, the squeeze, he flops middle set, which, as we'll see in the example hands, is just beautiful because the likelihood of an overset is markedly reduced, the uh, underset is still possible, which you totally dominate. And when you have that king or that ace or that queen as the high card on the board, 
it's very likely that against two players somebody's going to have that and pay you off with your middle set. So this is just really, really valuable for that mid set right here. And his total equity, if nobody folds and everybody goes to the river, is 54%. <laughs> We're sitting here with top pair, top kicker, and we have 1.772% equity to the river. Basically nothing with top pair, top kicker. So again, guys, have a look. Small pots, small hands, big pots, big hands, i.e. two pair plus. Not over pairs and sure as hell not top pair, top kicker, although it is good given certain circumstances. Please don't quote me out of context here. Let's look at a different situation. Let's look at aces. <laughs> wow, that changes a lot, doesn't it? Amazing, now we're up to 4% equity <laughs> to the river with an over pair of aces on that board. We are a 4% complete underdog. 96% of the time say we're going to lose with a pair of aces, an over pair on that board given this constellation, given these hand matchups. Pretty, pretty sick. Um, similar situation, of course, with queens. Um, yeah, if not exactly the same, of course. Uh, good. Just to give you guys an idea of how that can look with your top pair, top kicker. All right, now let's do this. Let's say, let's say our open raiser here, the sevens, open raised and then folded to this guy's light three bet squeeze, and we called him. And same flop. Now two handed. And without that flop set, this guy is still 56% ahead of us. We've got 43.7% equity to the river with our top pair, top kicker. So that means this guy here with the 65 um, suited, basically 15 clean outs, has 56% against our top pair, top kicker. That's maybe for some of you guys really astonishing. I hope it is because this is a monster draw and he's actually at the flop ahead of you just with the draw. Now let's look at aces. <laughs> uh, no, there's no difference. Yep. Completely the same. Yeah. Similar draw. Actually, precisely the same draw. Good. Let us look at a different situation. <laughs> Let's look at Ace King with one blocker. He's still at 52%. Pretty crazy, right? Let's look at Ace King with two blockers. Now it switches because now he's got to hit that open ended straight draw into the river. That's 31% equity. But even with just the one, say, he's still ahead of us. Top pair, top kicker, behind on the flop versus that hand. Let's look at this one. Let's say our same situation, but our squeezer had sevens. All right. Pretty sick. <laughs> We've got here a backdoor flush draw for the diamonds, backdoor nut flush draw, and top pair, top kicker in a heads up pot on the flop flop set is 95 percent ahead of us 95 percent so what's the rule hmm don't remember oh yeah small pots with small hands big pots with big hands what's a big hand well two pair or better that means we have a strong hand which is very often a hand that we donate our entire freaking stack with because we're not expecting this. Let's say we've got the flush draw and top pair, top kicker, right? You would think that would be just enormous. Top pair, top kicker and the flush draw, only 30% equity to the river. So the set here, again on a two suited board, should protect with that flop set on that board to protect against our flush draw. Uh, of course, here, here we do have um, running kings and running aces for a uh, the full house, but let's say that king, uh, for example, purposes, uh, king of hearts. Say. So we trip up 
on the turn. Miss our flush, but we trip up on the turn. Looks good, right? Wrong. <laughs> our trips, with the ace kicker, by the way, gave our opponent a full house. And he has now at this point 84% equity against our turned trip hand with top kicker. And a flush draw. <laughs> of course, in this case, yeah, he's already full, so it doesn't matter. Let's look at this one. All right. So here we go. Same scenario. Squeezer had the sevens. Uh, open raiser let it go. And the flop comes queen, nine, four, diamonds, two suited, which happened to be our suit of spades. Here at this point, we, for all intents and purposes, whiffed. Okay, we didn't hit the king or the ace, which, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is going to happen 66 more or less percent of the time, two times in three flops. Yet, in this case, he's got the underpair, and we haven't hit one of our cards, but we do have this monster draw, so we have the full nine outs for, this, uh, for the flush, plus every king and every ace. Gives us more equity than he has on the flops. This is a good time to push at this point with 52, 53% equity, sometimes 54, whatever. However, if, as will often be the case, that queen has been hit by this guy, and as will also often be the case, when somebody hits that queen, the kicker is going to be an ace or a king. Okay, so that takes away three of our outs. And look at the difference here. Now all of a sudden we are behind at, you know, on average maybe 46, 45 percent. Means this guy is a favorite, even though we do have this very strong draw. So when we push with 46 percent equity, we have to make up that difference in fold equity. That means the likelihood that this guy will let go of top pair, top kicker in a three bet squeeze pot. Let's look at another scenario. Uh, we take ace king o this time for clubbies, I guess. Yep. And that's just ridiculous. So we've only got the two overcard draw here with the backdoor flush draw. And all of a sudden we're only at 17% equity. So we're going to lose one time in six. And yeah, this guy's just sitting pretty. Let's look at another one. <laughs> This monster draw, you know, we hit this um, overcard potential draw plus the nine outs for the flush. And our squeezer was again squeezing light with a pair of fours this time. Now, before we just saw that we had 53% equity when we have a clean 15 outs, that means we can hit either the king or the ace or any spade for the flush and still be better than that guy's underpair. This case is different. He three bet squeezed us light with a pair of fours and flopped his set. As he will do again, anybody remember how often? Right, one time in 8.5 with a pocket pair. And now, when we're on this board, this queen nine suited board with an ace king, right, matching suits, we only have 25%, 26% equity to the river. And this guy's here at 74, 75%, sitting pretty with his set of fours in position. If in our push calculator we enter the full 54% and we're wrong, that is going to markedly change our results. So I wanted to throw this guy's, um, throw a few of these scenarios at you to let you know how how your equity then changes in these given situations. Let's look at one more, actually. Let's look at uh, somebody who came in and really 3-bit squeezed this light with a queen-9 offsuit. <laughs> he flops top two and has 64% equity. So again, here, we can't be giving ourselves the full 53, 54% equity for our draw because the ace of the king isn't going to help us. And again, um, let's say this guy went, uh, made a more respectable honest say three bet squeeze with a king queen suited and again we can't count our king outs here 
because they're blocked. Any king that comes is going to give him top two, and it's only going to give us top pair. So again, we're at a situation where we're not at 15 outs, but at 12. And this is how uh, these big draws can also, if, I mean, with good players, they know about these good draws, or these big draws, and they know how to push them on the flop, too, and on the turn. Uh, they're also aware of the equity swings that we covered in great detail, yet again, guys, in the Poker Math subseries. Please see that again if this isn't clear. Um, yeah, so be aware that if somebody is on that king, queen, queen, ace kind of hand, that, you know, our ace king is, uh, we got to discount some outs here. We can't give ourselves a full 15. Maybe, you know, to be safe in these situations, give yourself 45, as you just saw. With sets and stuff like that, you may even be at 20, um, or, or just 30 for your flush draw, for example. Let's look at this one. This is maybe a bit surprising for some of you guys. Let's say he raised this with the hand we just analyzed, 10 jack suited, in position, made a 3-bet squeeze, 10 jack suited, in position, against an open raiser, R, mid position, cold call, and then he comes over the top for full 16 big blinds, open raiser folds, we then call. Flop comes, queen, 9, 4, suited, 2 suited again, which, by the way, he doesn't have the suits for. So, 9, 10 jack, queen, and here's a flop, queen of spades, nine of spades, four diamonds, yet again giving us the overcard draw plus the flush draw. In this case, the queen ten of clubs has an open-ended straight draw, and that's pretty much all he's got. So that's going to put us um, pretty decent here at 70% because he hasn't hit yet, and he's also on a draw. Let us look at maybe a potential turn card. Right. Wow, excellent. We hit one of our we hit one of our fifteen outs that we gave ourselves. Ah shit. <laughs> what what happened? We just hit top air, top kicker, and all of a sudden we're eighty percent behind the guy. Well, guess what? Jack ten. Relatively light three bet squeezed you. Flop the open ended straight draw and completed on the turn giving you top pair, top kicker, and you think you may have a big hand. Guess what? What is a big hand? Not top pair, top kicker. <laughs> I was sorry for beating this one in, but it's the only way to really do it. Top pair, top kicker, over pairs, very, very vulnerable, not a big hand. Big hand is two pair or better. Again, I'm, it's a real gift to you guys. I can't tell you how much I've lost on this kind of crap. Not seeing the signs and playing it incorrectly. Here's a good spot to play for pot control. I mean, if he pushes, of course, the best move this guy can make right here with a completed open in a straight draw after our after our probable bet into that on the turn is to push. Get it all in right now at 80% equity because he didn't want to see that third spade for sure. And he could just call, wait for a non-spade to hit and hope that we'll bluff or let's say actually with a king we'll think we're good here and make a value bet. And then, you know, he just calls us down and get it, gets it all in, in, yeah, with that line. Also possible. All right. On the flop, we're 70%, 2-9. Let's look at this one. Wow. We still got our big, relatively big draw. But look at that equity swing. Look at that equity swing. He hits the jack. He hits his jack. Still got the open in a straight draw, but he's paired now. He's got a made hand. We're still on a draw. Our equity dropped to 32% from a flop 70%. So yet again, with that big draw, where's a good time to push? On the flop or on the turn? Yeah, on the flop. Getting it in on the flop is a good idea here. Again, we can't know that he's on the jack-10, and of course if he is, let's say, on the nines, suited. <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah, we're again at 25% for a flush draw. Uh, in this case, the four spades would make our flush. And have a look at this. 
We're like, oh, excellent. We hit the nut flush. We hit the nut flush with the four spades. No, we didn't hit anything. The board paired. What we hit was called setting yourself up for extreme reverse implied odds. <laughs> As we covered, again, in the Poker Math series. This out, this four spades, must not be counted in your total outs count of nine. That four you got to take completely out of your equation. You got to give yourself only eight here if you put the guy on the set. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much that to the river. And so, yeah, a lot of guys say, you say, oh, fantastic. Nut flush. Huh. You never have a nut flush on a paired board. You have a strong hand, but you have an extremely beatable hand. And if somebody plays back at you when you have that flush on a paired board, knowing that most players, especially novice and recreational players, freeze up on three suited boards. When you do then get action versus your, <laughs> you know, considered nut flush, and you don't think that this guy is on the, the full house, be ready for a shocker. I mean, okay, you do have guys who call four or five suited and all of a sudden trip up and think they're good. Also possible, but these, I mean, from both sides of the table, this is a hell of a good spot to bluff. Maybe I've got the four, maybe I've got the set of nines or queens, maybe I've got my completed flush, who knows. These are the kind of boards that you can really get creative on. And these are the kind of boards that you should also be very, very careful on because you have a beatable hand here, even with the nut, quote unquote, nut flush. Okay, paired board means there is no nut flush, there is simply a flush. <laughs> a very beatable flush, and if you're ready to stack off, with your flush versus a paired board, well, good luck. I hope you're not playing at too high a stakes.